Uh, I'm, I'm curious if you're frustrated or what is your emotions with now you, the team has traded two starters or, or loaned, traded or loaned two starters? Well, uh, I, I, I don't know how to answer that because it's not frustration what comes to my mind. This is MLS, is uh, moving parts happen all over the place, all over the clubs, and I've been used to this a long time ago. Um, and again, if you're talking specifically about Andrew, about Ivara, uh, I'm very thankful for the time they had here. I always appreciate working with them, two good players for me, two guys that were always putting their heart on the field, uh, very good off the field, both of them. Um, and I just appreciate the time. The time now in Atlanta is over and we have to move on as a team. I have to move on as a coach. And the same happened you know, with Joseph, with Luis, with all the players that have departed, Marcelino, Barco, like we have to move on and continue. And and we, we, you know, those, all those names that I just put out there, George Campbell, I mean, we're facing him. I mean, uh, there are good players and, and that's life, that's football, that, that happens. And all I can do is just to move on and, and focus on the players that I have, which also I know you, you, you heard the news, we are signing players and, and more players are coming. And then after this period of time of, you know, players leaving, players staying or players signing, then I think we can see what type of roster we have. What is your plan to, to fill in uh, for Gutman and for Ibarra? Who might take those positions? I think in the midfield we have too many options. In midfield we have, I think we have, uh, if, if there's depth in one position, I think it's in midfield. So uh, there are a few options there. Uh, and well, we'll have to make decisions. Of course, the, this came up quickly, so you know we have to adjust. Uh, but we have options. The same with Andrew. I think you've seen uh, Caleb playing left back. You've seen Aiden McFadden playing left back. Ronald Hernandez playing left back. So we have options. Depends on what we need, um, and we will move on and we will adjust. How will you use uh, Muyambo when he, whenever he's eligible to play? How? Mm -hmm. In terms a of six or an eight or, a, or yeah, there I think more as a double pivot. I think that's how how we are planning to use him. Uh, whether it's a six and eight, I think we are leaning more towards an eight, but uh, more as a double pivot rather than a guy that is going to be uh, uh, in between the lines or stuff like that. I don't think is his profile, uh, but it's going to guy it's going to be a guy that is going to help us with winning some duels that we need in the midfield. Physical can cover ground and uh, is very good at connecting passes forward. So it's, it's going to be more of a connector from a different line, and you know uh, he has to integrate in the system, and we have to see how he. Shows shows next to some pairs and see what is the best pair there, which players adapt better to his positioning. So we have to see that uh, as a team. And I mean, Gutman has started a lot of games this year, so I assume he wasn't a player that you wanted to be traded or, or asked to be traded. Is that <laughs> accurate? Well, when it comes to that, again, uh, Carlos was just with you guys. And, and for me, Carlos, roster, players leaving, I cannot talk more about that. Uh, for me, my role as a coach is to try to give the tools that I have in my charge now uh, the best tools to succeed. And, you know, more than that, I don't want to start a controversy here. If if I like this, I don't like this. It's, it's, we're in communication normally with Carlos. We're always talking about how to improve the team. And you know, signings happen, uh, players leaving happen, and we adjust. Well, it seems like a difficult spot that you're in now without Navarro because he become very central to your, the team that you put out. I think he's played the six most minutes on the team this year. Seem to be improving. Um, so, is that something that the team is going to have to work around during this month? before yeah. they can really gel? Yes, as I said, we have to adjust. Uh, of course, Ibarra was doing great. Uh, I think you all saw the progression of Ibarra when he arrived here. Um, and this moment, he's been much better. And he was uh, part normally of the starting lineup. Yes, that's true. Uh, but again, this happens in the league. I mean, you've seen, I want to talk about other teams, but other players leaving and guys that were starting for other clubs are leaving and are going because they, when you play, you. Players are interested. Uh, teams are interested in you, so it's normal. It's MLS. I've seen this many times. I probably you have seen more than me. So, um, of course, we will adjust. We will try to adjust in there and try to uh, improve that area as well. When you have a month like this during the middle of a season where there is so much player movement, do you change your approach on the training pitch almost to be more like a training camp where you're trying to get players 
integrated in, in specific ways, or do you kind of just carry on? I'm just wondering how these new players that come into the team impact the work overall in training. Well, with the new players, always the same process. Try to slowly build them up to, to understand the system, understand our methodology, our processes, you know, the activation before the session, the gym after, uh, how we train, intense training sessions, shorter but very intense, uh, tactically, what's the roles in each situation they are, offensively, defensively, transitions, uh, player from the back, final third, quarter roles, and slowly by slowly we have to integrate in them. With the rest of the team, we normally train them all the same. We train them in the same roles. So when we do, today we did unit work and we were training patterns in the final third, we train the guys playing outside the same and we train the strikers the same so they know. So whenever we need them on the field, they know what they have to do. So that's the hope. And always with the new players, we try to build their confidence and their understanding on the, on the tactics that we are trying to play. I should have done more research about this, but Garth has said that he likes to deal in this window just because globally, it just makes more sense financially, economically, um, and obviously you've worked with, you know, on a team with Garth before, and it's so worked. do you have experience kind of with this in terms of integrating a lot of new important players during this time? Yes, I mean, Brian was a great mentor for me to understand the emotions, the different things happen in the head of the player when they're moving, especially coming from Europe to different countries, different actually continents, and coming here to impact the game, uh, family, status, new life, new culture, adapting to new language, adapting to all of this is very important. So that's why at times the last part of our job is talk about tactics with them. It's about knowing them, where's their head, where's the motivation, how we can focus to uh, push themselves, to challenge themselves in every training session, integrating the culture and the team, all that. Uh, that's where we spend most of the time. And then at the end, oh, by the way, you have to do this on the field, right? So, uh, and that comes also with training. So uh, I'd say like my time in Seattle, those signings in the middle of the year were very successful and part of that is, is because number one we signed good players and number two because uh, Brian was doing a great job on integrating them in the system. Is there something you want uh, a consistent uh, skill that you're looking for from some of these new players like that you maybe don't have now like speed for example Mayamba looks like he's a pretty fast guy is that something you're trying to get with all of these players that are coming in? I cannot highlight one over the other. I think you want good footballers and guys that can, you know, play. Uh, you know, speed on, on its own is nothing if you don't have the ability to understand time and space. So you've seen one of the best midfielders ever is, for me, Sergio Busquets. He's not the fastest guy in the world. And, you know, he understands football better than many, many, many fast players. So uh, speed is one thing. Mental speed is another one. Uh, with that saying, of course, we know Muyumba has uh, physical attributes that are going to help us. But I think the most important part is that he understands how to use his physicality. So um, you want good footballers around and there's certain characteristics you are looking because of the type of players we have around, but I would say we want overall good people, good players. The formation change that y'all used uh, against Philadelphia, you got the shot out, uh, the offense created, uh, I can't remember how many chances, but a good amount of chances. Is, might this be the base formation going forward? We will see. We will see. Um, uh, I'm not married with one or two formations. I'm very flexible tactically. I think you have seen that. but. Uh, but I, at some point, I need to stick to one. So I'm just now in this moment when we don't have Mines, when we don't have, well, we didn't have uh, Derek, and now that we are losing some players, some others are adapting. After all these moving parts that, yes, will happen in the next few weeks, uh, we have to, okay, reshuffle everything. Okay, what's the best lineup? What's the best 11? And then from there, we'll make a decision. At the moment, uh, I think back five look good. We may continue with that one for the near future. And then after these two games, these three games, we will see what, what we can do.